Hi guys and welcome to another free tutorial. I don't know where you are when you'll be watching this, but where I am right now, summer is around the corner, so it's time to get a little more shredded, a little bit more diced, a little bit more chiseled for the summer months, for the bathing suit. My bulk's been going well, but it's time to reveal those abs just a little bit more. So this is what we'll talk about in this free tutorial today. The most effortless, fun way to get shredded while still eating huge meals every day and without having to sacrifice all your social life or all the foods that we all love to eat. So let's get into it. So, welcome again to this short video tutorial in which I'll share with you how to eat huge meals every day to shed body weight and body fat effortlessly and get lean fast. So let's get into it. I hope you're excited. I'm excited. Um, but before we get into the soy meat and potatoes of today's tutorial, uh, you're probably wondering who the hell are you and why should I be taking any advice from you? So let me briefly introduce myself. So my name is Jay, just like in the Instagram handle at the bottom there, Jay Vegan Fitness. And this picture of me in a suit is basically me in my natural habitat, if you like. Um, for the majority of my adult life, I've been working in business as a business consultant with major corporations in London, Tokyo uh, and other places. And that's, that was my career until very, very recently. And if you want to check out exactly what I was up to, you can find me on LinkedIn if you want and then have a look there. But basically I was working a high stress, uh, high productivity focused job on a daily basis, lots of business trips. So I didn't have a lot of time really outside of work to spend on, you know, going to the gym for hours or meal prepping. But nonetheless, it's what I try to do. I really dedicated myself. I was in the gym five to six days a week. You know, I wanted to, have it all, you know, be successful and look amazing and feel amazing. So I was working out five to six days a week and on Sundays I would spend hours meal prepping and on, you know, during lunch hours I would have my little box ready just to scoff down while I was working on my laptop or whatever. And um, yeah, that was basically my life and the results were kind of disappointing. So this picture is me like I said, working 60 plus hours a week, going to the gym five, six days a week, cycling to and from work every single day, you know, getting my cardio in, uh, trying to do low carb, trying to do high fat, trying to do all the things, basically eating everything that had protein written on the label. And yeah, not really getting anywhere, not really getting the results that I, I was after. And it was really frustrating and really, disappointing to be honest to be working so hard and not getting the results you're after but I'm, I'm not the kind of person to quit easily so I kept trying to educate myself and figure out how I could make this work I refused to give up and just say okay I'm, I'm meant to be working in my job uh, every single day really hard and you know just have a, a big gut to show for it I, I wasn't going to settle for that so I kept educating myself and eventually I even became a certified uh, functional fitness trainer and I, I started to understand what was really important and what was really crucial in achieving the kind of physique that I wanted and what was just added benefits and but not really crucial and necessary. You see, if you're working a full-time job, you, you don't have, and you have family on the side, you have other commitments, you don't have that much time to dedicate uh, as maybe an Instagram model has, or you know, a professional athlete has, but so much in the industry, the fitness industry, comes from people whose sole job is to work out every day, and to you know, who have the time to meal prep every single day, fresh produce and whatnot. It doesn't really work for the average dude. But I figured out what worked and what didn't, and these are the results that I got from working out just three days per week, yes, just three days per week, and finding a way that I could eat huge meals every day, 
go out to client dinners, have a drink or two, enjoy life, be sociable and still look and feel amazing and be productive at work. So that's kind of my story till this point. And then obviously people around me started noticing, asking for advice. And then last year when COVID hit and gyms closed, everybody was asking me, how, how do you do it? Uh, what can I do from home? And I thought now might be the time to turn my passion and all the things that I've learned over the years and, and take that and share that with people. So that's, that's what I do now. Uh, hence the uh, Instagram handle, you know, JB Fitness. Go and follow me if you like. Uh, I post content on my workouts and my, my nutrition on a daily basis. And I created courses, online courses, you can see on the right, uh, focused on either building muscle, especially as a vegan. We have a lot of stereotypes and a lot of uh, false information to deal with. So that's a, a, a course just dedicated to that. Or getting lean, how to get lean effortlessly, three workouts per week and eating huge meals or, you know, some one-on-one -on -one coaching if neither of those two fits your, fits your circumstances or you just want to have that extra level of accountability of working with a coach one-on-one. -on -one. I totally get it. I've done it myself multiple times um, to learn from the best. So that's enough about me. Let's get into why we are here today. So when it comes to losing weight or doing anything really to change your body, there's, there's one huge myth out there in the fitness industry. And I just want to get that out of the way before we jump into how to actually do it, just because it can, keep, it can, can you know, hold some people back mentally if that's something they've heard before or they, they think about. So the number one myth about muscle building and nutrition and also about getting lean and achieving the physique of your dreams. What am I talking about? I'm talking about somatotypes. Maybe you've heard that term before, maybe you haven't. Somatotypes is basically a way of class, you know, classifying different body types. And generally they're classified into three different types. There's either the ectomorph, the mesomorph, or the endomorph. Let me briefly show you what that looks like. So for an ectomorph, just like you see in the picture here, it would be somebody who is characterized by long thin limbs and low body fat storage and who is said to have a hard time building muscle just because of the way the genetic uh, they, they, they their genetic makeup is they have a hard time building size and muscle and holding on to extra weight that's an ectomorph on the other hand we have a mesomorph who are characterized by decent muscle mass and also low fat storage basically your your born athlete type of people who are just genetically gifted in a way uh, that they build muscle quite easily, don't hold on to a lot of body fat, the best of both worlds. And then there are the endomorphs, you know, the people who have a hard time losing body fat, it just tends to accumulate more easily, they have softer edges, and that's kind of what they're characterized by. And these three body type classifications, you've probably seen before in the fitness industry, heard about before, but where do they actually come from? Well, I had, a, I had a look into the sort of history of all these somatotypes just to figure out if they were real or not a long time ago. And what I found was these, these body type classifications come from uh, an American psychologist called William Sheldon who came up with these in the 1940s. Now, maybe you're wondering why did a psychologist come up with body type classifications that tell us who has a hard time building muscle, losing body fat? It's a very good question. And in fact, he did not. That was not why he came up with this classification. Actually for him, it was a way to characterize people's character, people's personality. He was trying to associate the way people look now with the type of person they are, with you know how intelligent they even are, how sociable they are, or even their tendency to commit crime. So he was trying to generalize based on body types what people's personality type was. And if it sounds ridiculous, that's a good thing, because since then, since the 1940s, this, this theory has actually received nothing but criticism, really, and has been widely dismissed in psychology or even biology uh, everywhere. And you can see some of the, the criticisms here, you know, dismissed as quackery and so on and so forth. And there's a bunch of uh, uh, resources down there just to show you, you know, it's not just me saying that this is, this is bullshit basically it actually is um, you know it was it was an idea he had he pursued it he tried to make it look scientific it's not 
but somehow still even though it's, it's not scientific whatsoever it's part of the fitness industry you know maybe you've seen things like that in a, in a blog post or in you know in magazines or whatever how to train and diet for your body type you can see those three you know distinct body types there there's there's a ton of this stuff train for your body type how to eat for your body type and all these sorts of things special workout programs and you know advice for personal trainers it, it seems to be everywhere and I have no idea why but just to recap just to recap before we jump into how actually we can achieve our goals in the most efficient effective way possible just remember whether you're tall and skinny right now or you know you're a little pudgy a little soft around the edges now you are not stuck you are not somehow genetically cursed in a way that you can't build the body of your dreams this stuff somatotypes is not real it's not a thing so let's erase that from our minds for now and just approach it with what are the principles that will get me the most bang for my buck the most results because everybody and i mean it 100 percent everybody can achieve the body of their dreams so let's get moving here we go oh yeah before i before we do that you know if you thought that was the only myth out there unfortunately no there's not there's a bunch of other myths out there in the fitness industry when it comes to getting lean such as you know you have to do cardio uh, a bunch of running a bunch of elliptical machines that's the way you're going to lose weight not true you have to work out five to six days per week and hit each muscle group twice per week so you can maintain your muscle mass otherwise it's all going to go away or you're not never going to build any also not true um, to prevent muscle loss during a diet especially uh, you need to eat one to 1.5 to 2 grams of protein per pound of body weight by the way that's a lot and especially as a vegan that's just almost impossible to eat and at best you even eat it every two to three hours also not true you have to eat protein immediately after your workout you know the anabolic window also not true no scientific evidence for that whatsoever um, another another common one I used to believe for a long time dieting is hard and you have to make sacrifices you know your diet starts and suddenly you know you have to restrict yourself you can't have certain things until the diet is over it's hard and it's it's not fun also not true and fat makes you fat uh, so avoid and minimize I hope by now we all know fat is not the culprit and neither neither are carbs just saying it neither are carbs there's no macronutrient that in and of itself is bad okay these are just fad diets that uh, or, or new knowledge that people generate in the industry to push the newest diet craze or the newest product that they've designed and came up with. So just to show you, there's a bunch of stuff out there that is really misleading. So how can we cut through all of that and really understand, okay, what is actually going to help me? Which of all of those things that we hear on a daily basis are actually going to help us? So before, uh, to help us understand what's going to help us figure this out I want to share just another principle with you that at first hand at first sight might not look like it has anything to do with health and fitness but bear with me I, I believe this if you apply this to your life and especially to your diet and to your exercise mindset this will have a huge huge impact and shift it to make it much more easy to understand what to do what not to do and that principle is the Pareto principle it's actually an economics principle and it basically just states um, that 80% of outcomes are generated by 20% of inputs. What does that mean? So for example, in a company, 80% of the company's results tend to be generated by the top 20% performers. Or you know, in a, in a country, when you collect taxes, 80% of the taxes tend to be or tend to come from the 20% top earners in that country kind of makes sense again what does it have to do with health and fitness you might ask let's let's uh, have a look at that so with the Pareto principle the 20% that is actually going to give us the results that we want or 80% of the results that we want are called the vital few and the other 80% the, uh, the ones that are not really going to get us that much more additional uh, results are called the trivial many now, with regards to the fitness industry, you know, there's so many things out there. You could do total that daily calorie consumption. Is that a vital few or a trivial many? Or we have low carb diets, and high fat diets, and high carb meals only before a workout, or eating protein every two to three hours, or taking BCAA supplements, or creating monohydrate supplements. 
this principle tells us, okay, out of all of these, probably, if there's a list of 10, probably just two of them are really important and are gonna get us real good results. The rest, eight out of 10, probably a waste of money and time, at least for us. If you're a competitive athlete and that's all you do and you try to eke out those extra one or two percent, then yes, do them all. But for us everyday warriors, you know, who have a lot of other things to worry about on a daily basis, we want to look at those things and be like, which are the two out of 10 that are actually going to work? So with regards to that whole list down here, this, this nutritional pyramid will help us really uh, understand out of the whole list, which is the most important, which are the vital few and which are the trivial many. So this nutritional pyramid here on the right, you can see it kind of stacks uh, from the bottom all the way up and, and each layer builds on top of the other. So if you're ever in doubt, hmm, what I'm looking at, is it a vital few or a trivial many, start at the bottom. If it's one of the things at the, at the bottom of the pyramid, it's definitely going to give you more bang for your buck in terms of results than anything at the top. So at the bottom you see we have total calories. So if you're hitting your daily calorie consumption targets, that's gonna have a much, much bigger impact on your overall look, physique, and feel than if you didn't care how much you ate and took all the supplements. Just supplements alone at the top of the, the list are not gonna help you. So just to reiterate, each of the layer of the pyramid builds on top of the other, and therefore, the most important thing, the, the one thing we need to, if we, you know, cut out all the other crap out there, the one thing we need to focus on is total calories, how much calories we're eating on a daily basis in order to achieve our goal physique, and then also adherence. How can we make it as easy and as simple as possible to hit our daily caloric targets every single day without burning out and without feeling like it's a drag and without feeling like we're depriving ourselves, we're not being sociable or anything like that. So those two things are the most crucial. Those are the only things we're gonna look at for the remainder of this tutorial because they're that important. Now, total calories. How much should you eat in order to lose weight, get lean, get chiseled, uh, and get your dream physique? First step um, would be to actually calculate your current maintenance level. How much, how many calories do you need to eat to stay where you are? Keep your current body composition, keep your current body weight. There's also, again, a ton of uh, information out there on how you could, in theory, do that. Um, I would recommend you use this formula, Niflin Senjor, I believe that's how you say it, uh, formula. Um, I won't go into detail uh, exactly why, but you can just Google it. So you'll, you'll find calculators on, on the formula online. Um, I like it mainly because it, it's not just a, a standard formula that doesn't look at any parameters. It does look at your height, your weight, uh, your age, and your activity factor. So it's, it's quite um, comprehensive without needing to go away and do like a body, body fat percentage test, which not many people have access to. So yeah, you can, you can Google that formula, find calculators that do it for you online, or take out a pen and paper and just do the quick calculation yourself. I've just done it here as an example for me. So my basal metabolic rate, the amount of calories I, I require just to exist, you know, just by, eat, by, by living, breathing, and existing, uh, are calculated like, like you can see here. It brings me to 1,623 calories. Then you have to add in your activity factor. In my case, like I said, I only work out three days per week and every single day I try to get some moderate exercise like walking 10,000 steps. So my activity factor is 1.5. So in order for me every single day to maintain my weight, I would have to consume 2,434 calories there or thereabouts. It's always just a rough starting point. Now, most diet programs do that as well. They, they have you calculate your, your daily calories, uh, total daily energy expenditure, and then just say, you know, slash off 500 calories or slash off 20% or, you know, take out all the carbs uh, and then off you go. I think that's a very, it's, it's too simplistic of an approach because we all start at different starting points in our journey. So knowing what you should be eating on a daily basis to stay where you are is great. But then we also, I think, need to go one step further and ask ourselves, how much am I currently actually eating? If you already know, that's great. 
Um, but many people, um, I would argue, have never really tracked what they eat on a daily basis. They just kind of eat as they go along and then maybe wonder, okay, why am I not gaining weight, not losing weight um, at the rates that I want to? So I really, really highly encourage you, if you've never tracked your calories, just download an app on your phone and get into the habit of just checking what you're eating, not to scrutinize it, just to see where you're at, just to see what your starting point is. So step two, compare to compare what you should be eating to maintain your weight to what you're actually eating. And I would argue there's probably most likely three different scenarios that are gonna come out of this, this sort of self-experiment. Uh, let's have a look at each of them. So in scenario A, you know, you, you track what you're eating and you realize, ah, oh, it's, it's kind of there or thereabouts uh, with my maintenance level, so with my TDEE. In my case, 2,434 calories. Or you realize, okay, yeah, I now that I'm tracking my calories, I have been eating quite a bit more than my what I need to just maintain my weight. Um, I'm eating three, five hundred or more calories on a daily basis regularly, which is not a bad thing. It's just good to know where you start, and it's going to be important in a second when we decide on the next step. Or scenario C. Maybe you've tried to diet and you did a crash diet, but you didn't know what else to do. I've had a friend like that, you know, for a couple of weeks, he was just eat, drinking meal replacement shakes. And if you add all of that up, that's like eight, 900 calories max per day. He's a tall dude, a bigger guy. Um, so if you've been dieting quite strictly and have been eating less than 500, like less than a 500 calorie deficit below your maintenance level, so let's say your maintenance level minus five, six, seven, eight hundred calories for the last weeks or so, that's also again a very different starting point. Um, and then for each of those, let's have a look at maybe what the ideal way would be to go about. So scenario A, like we said, you currently are eating roughly what you need to maintain your body weight. So in that case, I would suggest start with a 500 calorie deficit. So in my case, 2400 is my maintenance level. I would go down to just above 1900 and track my process on a daily basis. Why 500 calories? There is no real scientific proof for this, but it's generally widely accepted that a pound of fat, of body fat, uh, symbolizes or represents rather about 3,500 calories. So in order to burn one pound of fat per week, 3,500 divided by seven is about 500 calories in a deficit per day. So that's where this 500 comes from. It's not exact science, I'm just putting it out there, but it seems to work quite well for most people where this 500 calorie deficit still leaves you with, in my case, you know, I'm not that not that tall, not that heavy, still get to have about almost 2,000 calories per day, and that helps me not feel like I'm completely in starvation and keeps my metabolism up, keeps my hormones functioning properly, while still steadily losing weight, seeing progress, and seeing progress is so, so motivating as well to just keep on it and keep sticking to it. So that's where the 500 comes from. In scenario B, if you're used to eating quite a bit more than your than what you should be eating to maintain just your weight you know i don't think it's 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 smart to then jump from eating above your maintenance to jumping way below in a 500 calorie deficit and creating like this huge huge gap if you don't need to so i would start actually just decreasing from where you are currently to where you need to be to maintain your weight to your tde that way you're you're kind of artificially creating a three to 500 calorie deficit. So your body is is getting less energy than it's used to, which can already be enough to trigger your body into um, starting a fat metabolism and helping you lose weight initially. Again, I would do that, see how you get on, track your progress, see if you're losing weight. And then only then when you stall, let's say for a week or so, your weight isn't budging and you're, you look in the mirror and nothing is changing, then I would go, okay, let's add in the actual, the actual 500 calorie deficit. Um, because why would, you, why would you play all your trump cards at the beginning, right? With scenario C, where you've been eating substantially less than you should um, to maintain your weight, I would actually recommend that you go back just to eating at maintenance level for two or three weeks. You probably won't be losing any weight during that period, which can be a sort of, it can mentally play tricks on you. But the important thing is that we kind of 
create a, a solid starting point. We go back, maintenance level, two to three weeks, your body regulates back to normal again, brings your hormones back, brings your hunger, hunger levels down. Because if, you're, if you've been on such a strict diet before, you're, you're probably, you know, dealing with some ravenous hunger here and there, or, you know, struggling with sleep or struggling with, with other things. Um, so we want to get that back into normal, healthy ranges, all of that, uh, before we then go and start with our 500 calorie deficit and actually feel good uh, on the diet. That's for total calories. Now, the next point, knowing how many calories you should be eating is one thing. Are you going to stick to it? Not just for a day, not just for a week, but for day after day, week after week, until you reach your goal. So adherence, making it consistent, making it so that you can stick to it is really, really crucial. So in terms of diet adherence, I think a good diet should be all of those things on this list. A good diet should be satisfying and satiating. It should fit easily into your lifestyle. No point if you have to meal prep for hours and it's just a hassle. It should be sociable, you know, if you can't go out to eat with your friends and family, that's not fun either. It should be fun and effortless. It should be productive and not make you hangry. I can't tell you the amount of times I've been on a diet, on a diet um, that I thought was gonna work and it did, but it, you know, I really struggled to stay focused at my corporate job and you know, just overall had a miserable experience, with, had a short temper towards clients or towards my, uh, my co-workers. It was just not pleasant. So a good diet should hit all of those points. Sounds too good to be true, right? And I thought so too for a long, long time um, until I tried and fell in love with intermittent fasting. You might be already familiar with this, which is great. Just a quick recap though, if you're, if you're not, intermittent fasting. Uh, the most important thing to understand here that there's a clear difference uh, between our fasted state and our fed state. It's a completely different body me mechanisms that get activated into each of those states. So fasted state is you haven't been eating for at least three, four, five hours and your body then shifts into a different regulation mode. It, it activates different bodily processes. Um, the longer you fast, uh, the more a process called autophagy, for example, gets activated as well, where your body's self-cleaning, self-healing mechanisms kind of get a chance to come out and help just clean everything up a bit. Whereas in the fed state, you know, that's when, you know, we, we consume food, we secrete into or our bodies secrete insulin and our bodies is then really busy with metabolizing the food and bringing it to all the right places and, and really just making the most out of the, the substance, the, the sustenance that we give it. So there's really distinct processes that take place in, in each of those states. However, with our modern day way of living, we tend to kind of constantly be in, a, in an almost fed state. You know, we we start with breakfast and then we have a snack before lunch and then we have lunch and another snack and another snack and a dinner and a dessert. So our bodies are constantly in this fat, uh, fed, sorry, fat, fed state and don't really get a chance to uh, just do some pure maintenance, do some, take some time away from just metabolizing food and also re-regulating some of the processes. So for, for example, one of the benefits, the first one listed here, is increased insulin sensitivity. If we're constantly, by constantly, I mean really every couple of hours, eating even if it's, even if it's just a small snack, our bodies are constantly, you know, secreting insulin, secreting insulin. And eventually that's gonna, you know, it create an insulin sensitivity with, within us. However, if we have some fasted periods, our bodies can re-regulate and bring those levels down again. Um, another great benefit of intermittent fasting um, is increased productivity and focus. That's not just a subjective thing. I have sources listed on, listed on the right, but there's, there's studies that show that people actually are more productive and more focused in a fasted state. I could go on and on about this for, for ages. I'll, I'll just quickly say this. Um, if you imagine back hundreds of years ago, even thousands of years ago, if we woke up in the mornings, there wasn't really a fridge that we could go to and just, just grab ourselves a snack or a, a breakfast uh, of any kind. We would have to go, get up, get moving, get going and find food or hunt food. So obviously, if you're looking and if you're being alert and if you're being, you know, on on guard or, or just, you know, in a focused state to trying to get some food, 
that's that's a very different way of being than if you've already eaten something you're telling your boy oh you know it's time to relax i'm fed we're good we can relax so this fasted state really increases productivity for me especially in the, in the morning hours um, it's a really, really great tool. Reduces inflammation. We talked about this, you know, the self-healing process, uh, and another great, great benefit, which is why I think this is the best tool for dieting, is if you skip your first meal of the day, you save all those calories for later in the day, so you can have huge, satisfying meals. It also means it's less hassle, you know, in the mornings you don't have to worry about bake, making breakfast. Um, you don't have to worry about any of those things. You, you can just get up, and get, get going quick cup of coffee and, and away you go and you can also lose fat while maintaining muscle you know in the, the typical bodybuilding world you would have to go through cycles of bulking and cutting and bulking and cutting so eating in a calorie surplus to gain more size and, and gain more weight and then go into calorie deficits to, to lose that extra body fat and do that for months on end whereas with with intermittent fasting you're kind of doing it on a on a daily basis you know you're you're in the in the fasted state you're metabolizing body fat and and, and cleaning out everything else and then in the fed state your body is then ready it's primed it's 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 in a great place to say right let's use those nutrients and give it to the places where we need it most so if you're exercising your body will be become incredibly efficient at using the nutrients that you give it and uh, give it to those muscle cells that need it or other places in your body so it's a great way of losing fat while maintaining muscle whereas with traditional sort of lots of cardio and and small calories and small meals throughout the day kind of diet people tend to lose weight yes but they also tend to lose a lot of muscle mass which at the end of the day you might then be skinny but is that really the aesthetic look that you hoped to achieve you know so again i could go on and on about the benefits of intermittent fasting i hope this was enough to convince you to give it a try um, just to show you what a day in my life typically looks like and how fun effortless and enjoyable it can be this is what it would be you know like i mentioned breakfast for me is just a cup of coffee um, i have one or two cups of coffee depending on how i'm feeling uh, lots of water sparkling water helps as well as so suppress your appetite you can have tea if you like if you drink coffee though drink it black no sugar no milk um, and just yeah just enjoy that feeling of increased focus and productivity um, and ride that wave until lunchtime and for lunch I have for example I'm, I'm a very simple man I like my meals simple easy quick to make this is uh, my my go-to um, vegan chickpea tuna sandwich if you like uh, that I make for lunch it's, it's a big it's a big old sandwich so that's that's enough to really fill me up for, for lunchtime or I will have a, you know I don't know if the picture does it justice it's a giant plate of some some roasted vegetables I just cut them up throw them in the oven they're baking away I have some, some spinach on the side and some uh, soy protein chicken style that I just fry up a little bit in the, in the pan so the whole thing you know is done in, in, a, in a 20 minutes and it's a tahini dressing on top it's delicious um, or same thing with a giant sweet potato again you can you can have that prepped you know have, have the sweet potato already cook them once uh, a week and have them ready to go so it doesn't need to be anything uh, difficult just have that for dinner I tend to have you know I, I love to eat giant meals so this is actually just one of the plates I would have I would have two of those for dinner um, so this is a I'm, I'm German I don't know if I mentioned this but this is a very typical vegan take on a German dish on some goulash um, potato dumplings like I said you know, two giant plates of that or some aubergine meatballs with rice on the side um, or was, this was beetroot pasta I made with avocado on top so like you can see I'm not too crazy worried about uh, you know slabs of tofu everywhere and give me all the protein it's more about satisfying colorful nutritious meals great portion sizes I could go out to eat for this and even have a pizza if I wanted to and then for dessert I have a, a sweet tooth I don't know about you guys one of my favorite desserts just because it's so simple I love peanut butter and banana banana sorry peanut butter and banana on a on a piece of toast or on a on a, on a piece of bread um, or recently um, if you signed up your email I'll, I'll send out the recipe in a, in a in the next email or so, I, I created and I discovered these oatmeal uh, protein cookies where I can have a 
whole tray of like nine giant cookies all to myself for just 500 calories at the end of the day so if you know if you look at this this is a full day of eating for me on a daily basis i get to the end of the day i'm, I'm satisfied i'm full i'm i'm feeling good i'm feeling confident and it's it was easy it was a blast i could easily you know swap out a dinner like this for going out to eat and have a vegan burger and fries or I could you know say hey instead of a dessert today I'm gonna treat myself to a nice beer I'm, I'm a beer guy I don't know about you but it, it allows you all of that flexibility and all of that fun and, and makes it just so that you can stick to your diet in the long term um, and that's that's what we're after that's the most important thing right so but Having said that, if you are curious in terms of this nutritional pyramid, exactly how much protein should you be eating, uh, what is best to have pre or post workout, what supplements are actually worth it, because some are, some are absolutely not, um, or whether organic is actually important, whether it's better than, than normal, normal uh, produce you get in the supermarket, uh, what the difference is between saturated and unsaturated fats or what are probiotics and prebiotics There's all these topics that we could go into in, in more detail and if you're curious to find out more I would highly highly recommend that you check out my ultimate vegan uh, Lean physique guide. I've linked it down below. Let me move this bubble over here in that um, I'll show you exactly, you know the kind of meal plans that I would have the kind of recipes that I would have and we dive into much more detail on each of the layers of the nutritional pyramid, like I said, micronutrients, meal timing, supplements, etc. Um, it comes as an online course format. You have access to all the modules straight away. Or if I show you here on the bottom right, you know, you can have it as an app on your phone, on the go, with recipes, with ideas um, on what to eat and how to eat it to achieve your lean physique goals in the most effective, most effortless way possible. Um, but that's just the nutrition side of things. The, the whole course also comes with, oh, there we go. <laughs> the whole course, this is the whole course of what it looks like. The whole uh, interface, it also comes with uh, exercise protocols and shows you exactly how you can build muscle, keep muscle, keep the muscle you have and get that lean chiseled physique with just three workouts per week from home that you can do from anywhere. You could do them in the gym, you could do them from home as you wish, um, you know, there's workout routines for all these different uh, weekly, three different weekly routines. Uh, there's exercise rotations to make sure, you know, you don't hit any plateaus, you keep pushing and progressing, even though you're in a, in a calorie deficit. And that's actually great uh, reason to do workouts from home because body weight training, you, you keep progressing as you get leaner because as you get leaner your body weight decreases so you're able to push yourself harder with body weight exercises do more difficult moves uh, do more do higher repetitions uh, and so forth whereas in the gym you know typically you would lose a bit of strength which can be a little bit demoralizing but I digress it's all in the plan exercise rotation uh, to help you get through and crush the plateaus if you hit any at all um, there is the exercise vault with videos on all the different exercises, how to do them properly, and how to progress towards the more the, the higher level moves. You know, all, all progressions, how to do handstand push-ups, one-arm push-ups, uh, pistol squats, uh, you name it. There's there's progressions in there for any kind of level, so beginner or advanced. You'll find one that works for you. Um, like like I said, they, they look like this, so you can you can click on them, follow along, and that's a full guide. It, it literally contains everything that I've learned through my own trial and errors and teaching myself and taking courses and getting certified, working with coaches uh, over the years. So there's a, there's a lot of knowledge in there and I'm, I'm convinced if, if you're really willing and ready uh, to take charge of your health, your nutrition, your exercise and also your mindset, don't underestimate your mindset, uh, everything is in there, a whole chapter on how to develop a kick-ass mindset three levels of self mastery it's all in there like i said uh access for life you can click uh, go through the course at your own pace as many times as you want to if you have any questions along with the course you can always contact me directly on our facebook group um, or just post any questions you have there it's also a great place to get some more accountability and meet some like-minded people who are on the same journey trying to achieve the same thing and also spread, you know, spread the word on 
we don't need to kill ourselves in the gym and also we don't need to kill animals in order to look amazing and feel amazing um, so I would love for you to join the journey and if this is something that's interesting to you click on the link below now check out the ultimate vegan lean physique guide and yes thank you so much for listening to this video tutorial watching this video tutorial I hope it was of value to you and I hope you take what you learned today and can apply it to your life and yeah, I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon.